All right, here with the former Mountaineer um, standout and high school coach now at Greenbrier West, Owen Schmidt. Owen, uh, obviously, uh, you've been down here for a while. How do you en enjoy coaching? I mean, is this something that you uh, saw doing when you were at WVU, even before that coming up? Um, I, I grew up with a coach. Um, my uncle was a coach. Obviously, grew up around the game. Um, and when the game was over, just kind of got away for for a, for a minute, you know what I mean? And then, um, and then it just I got asked out to come uh, come out here in the summertime, and uh, just kind of fell back in love with the game again, and uh, love working with the kids, love being able to show the kids techniques and and just you know tips and tricks of uh, the trade that I've been able to learn throughout the years and. and uh, to have success with and, and then and give and pass that knowledge on. I feel like that's kind of what we as players are, are uh, supposed to do. You were known as a guy that was <clears throat> very physical. I mean, uh, you know, the story of the broken face mask. I think Rich Rod actually kept a, a piece of a broken face mask on his desk. Um, so, and, and this team that you're coaching now, very physical. How much fun is it to come out here with a, this physical group of guys uh, and, and coach a team that's probably a guy after your own heart as, as far as being a player? Well, uh, it says a lot about your team uh, when, you, when they're tough, right? They can, they can handle a little bit of adversity. Mentally, they can deal with the bumps and bruises, the strains and sprains. Uh, and it's a good judge of character. And uh, that is something that I preach for sure. Uh, in high school, I feel that uh, that's a trait that's almost lost a little bit at times in the game. So, physicality. Yeah, the physicality. So it's I'm very thankful these guys are receptive to that. And, and we got a couple of crazy guys on the team. We got a couple of bull riders, a <laughs> couple of guys who are horse wranglers. So we got some we got some tough guys. Well, uh, uh, um, Holiday, Ethan Holiday. Yep. He's the guy that won. Uh, uh, rodeo event uh, bull riding at the state fair this year. I mean, you see something like that, does that get you pumped up? I mean, I I know how you feel about the physical part of the game. Does it get you pumped up to see stuff like oh, that? Oh, absolutely, absolutely fired up. Uh, I got to see his his uh, set last year. I uh, didn't get to go to the one this year that he won, unfortunately, but uh, I seen him take some pretty gnarly hits, and uh, <laughs> I knew he was going to be just fine. Um, what's the one thing about coaching that you weren't anticipating when you started I mean, it might be just that you hung on and, and fell back in love with the game. But what did what is the one thing you weren't expecting when you started coaching? Um, I didn't know if my passion was fully going to be back there. I didn't, you know, and I'm, I I kind of feel like when you do things, you should do them. Uh, you know, you should you should put everything you got into it. Uh, and I didn't know if I was quite going to be there. But the more and more that I invested myself, the more and more I saw myself wanting more. Uh, and not just for myself, but you know, for the kids. You're from, I think, Wisconsin. Yes, sir. Um, so not from West Virginia. What do you make of the way of the state, because of your Mountaineer days and this area, because of you know helping coach their kids, the way they kind of fallen in love with you? Oh man. Uh, well, I have an infectious personality. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. I remember that. <laughs> no, but uh, I. I think you just got to be there. You got to show up. And I think that's that's half the battle. Um, especially for kids, you know, not everybody has the greatest home life. Not saying that that's our situations for our kids, but just in general. Um, and, and having somebody that they can count on being there, I think that's what coaching lends to kids in general. Um, and it helps, you know. Sometimes you can't talk to your parents. You know, sometimes you can talk to your coach. We spend a lot of time with these kids. So, you know, we, we don't just coach football. We coach life. Um, I think that Ty Nickel last year was a guy that would a guy that played like you and really enjoyed being coached by you. Are there some guys that you see in that same mold with this year's team? I think there's guys that embody Ty's toughness. Absolutely. We and don't your have, own. Yeah, we don't have a... We don't have that physical body as far as, you know, that runner. Ty was a very special kid. He was, you know, he's about 230 pounds, uh, reckless abandonment for his body, played the game, you know, the way I love to see a running back play the game. And uh, I think we embody some of that spirit. 
Uh, we just don't have anyone physically that size uh, that plays like that. You uh, kind of you've been here what three years now, I think. This is your third year, so you're starting to get used to these rivalries and the games that mean something. And you got that coming up. You a little bit more juiced for um, the bigger games, maybe like the Oklahoma. This is probably with the Oklahoma type game for WVU this week. You know, James yeah, the teams that's had the, your number the last couple of years, but. Well, I mean, that's those are the games you play, you live for, right? That's what you prepare for. Uh, everybody wants to play under a packed crowd Friday night, um, and uh, you know, obviously, we're the underdog in the matchup. Um, James Monroe has a very well coached team. They're, I mean, for high school, they have very great size. Those guys up front, um, very athletic, um, and and their skilled positions as well. Uh, so it's quite the task for us to, you know, think outside the box when you're playing a team like this because, you know, you know, for us, most of the season we can run the ball. Uh, and now we have to think creatively how to be able to move the ball down the field and, uh, and put some points on the board because they've, they've, uh, they've, they've treated us pretty badly on the field. They've, they've had our number for the last couple of years. Mountaineer fans will be upset if I didn't ask you just a couple questions before I let you get back to practice here. Um, who were some of your favorite teammates um, back in the day in Morgantown? Oh, man, that's a tough question to ask. Uh, you know, All of them? <laughs> they, they, they were, man, in every special way. I feel like every guy has its friendship, right, and they're not all the same, uh, but they all help you individually in, in, in every way. Um, just notably guys like, you know, Mark Magro, uh, Bobby Hathaway, um, you know, those those are guys that uh, Bobby and I, of course, uh, work some off – uh, summer programs uh, in Grafton, uh, Jack Hammer and uh, Pier Caps in, in the Grafton Bridge there, <laughs> rebuilding that for uh, for income in the summertime. And, man job. Uh, yeah, man job <laughs> for work program. And, and, and Mark had always been there for me. Uh, kind of, you know, you know, he's he's definitely the yin to my yang. He's the uh, he's the better half. He's the angel. I'm kind of the. Uh, I'm not gonna say I'm the devil. I'm just a little mischievous at times. So uh, he was always there to kind of keep me in line. And I appreciate that for for uh, all eternity. Well, you had a, you have a famous teammate now, your kicker, yep. Pat McAfee. Everybody, yep. you know, he's kind of really taken over or taking ESPN by storm, and you know, real real popular um, sports talk commentator now. Um, he was also a bit of a free spirit. What do you? Yeah, I know you've seen the show. What do you think of, of the Pat McAfee show? Oh, I love it. I mean, it's... it's. You probably watch it on YouTube, too, right? Yeah, now. it's so different, uh, which I think is great for right now. Um, and he's going to evolve. I mean, he's not just an... He's a, he's an entertainer, straight up. He, I well, mean, he, he is... At, uh, more than more that, too, right? Yeah, he is commentating and stuff, but he's an entertainer. He's in, he's in wrestling. Uh, I'm sure he'll be in movies soon, some film. Uh, he's got... Man, I, I can't imagine if they do a... A movie about his his life it's going to be absolutely it'll be a it'll be a it'll be a wild trip man <laughs> was he the same way in morgantown i i think he was i mean in the media we didn't see you guys you know outside of outside of the push car center but uh yeah i mean but, pat was a huge personality um i think that's what's so likable about him is he is a likable guy he's he's funny he's witty um he works his tail off um and he's caring, you know what I mean, uh, which is you ever which is evident. Ever talk to him anymore? You ever? Yeah, we yeah. we, you know, it's few and far between. He's he's I like to call him the busiest man alive, uh, at least that I know. Um, well, he'll shoot, you know, he'll shoot a, a message here and there, um, see how I'm doing. I'll see how he's doing. Uh, but I know he's he's super slammed right now. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll keep in touch occasionally. But it's 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 when he can, you know. So I I'm. Very grateful when I see a text from him. When you went to Morgantown, you didn't expect what what actually happened, right? I mean, uh, obviously you wanted to play, but uh, you probably weren't expecting the, the kind of status. I mean, you all, for in Morgantown, you almost had the, that same kind of status as Mac. You kind of almost like a character. And we talked about your the cartoon that uh, someone had done for you. There. Oh yeah. Um, um, yeah, I mean. Obviously, going into Morgantown from you know transferring Divi from a three, Division right, yeah. three school, uh, you know my, the main goal was getting on the field. 
right? Um, and I'll and I'll call it a Cinderella story for me because it really was to have everything that kind of happened, those those events that happened um, throughout my career up there was was way more than I could have ever envisioned. Um, I wa I wanted to be successful, but that was just above and beyond what. I, I ever could have comprehended happening. Kind of legendary status, almost. I mean, I, I may be, it may be hard. I could say that. I mean, you were, <laughs> you were, you know, pretty big, and still are. I could and say a lot of people will never forget your run. Oh, um, I, and down in, uh, in, in Arizona. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, a funny quote, uh, Coach Stu said, uh, you know, Owen Schmitz is a folklore. If you if you've heard something about him, double it, and that's probably what happened. <laughs> Is that about accurate? Yeah, I don't know. That's that's <laughs> what he said. I'll 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 give it up to him. What do you remember most about? Uh, I, I don't know. What some players say they don't think anything when they're running. Just get to where the you know just keep going. Do you remember anything about the runaway beer truck? But yeah, you know, I mean, I guess you saw it later on. Uh, I would say call, but yeah, um, on that play. Well, obviously uh, the. the uh, it's my last game ever in Mountaineer uniform. Right. Um, so I didn't know how many opportunities I would get. Um, obviously, we, we ran a little uh, belly play and uh, sprung. It was, you know, the whole line collapsed, and I just jump cut out to the outside. Missed, uh, you know, just missed a little shoestring tackle there. And uh, the whole time what I'm thinking is don't get caught from behind. <laughs> you got to make this one. This is your last time. Uh, and uh, fortunately, I was able to. I even took a spot at the Jumbotron just to kind of see where I was because I knew if I turned my head around, I'd slow down. So, uh, so you actually did look during the run. Oh, you, you have to. You got to use all the technology to your advantage. <laughs> I think you did. Um, your career as a coach, you see this going on? Yeah, I mean, I, I love this. Uh, you know, I'll be here as long as... Uh, as long as they kick me out, I guess, you know, or as, as long as they don't kick me out. So, uh, and and where I could be in a in a few years, who knows? I don't know where coaching will, will take me, but uh, so far I love being here and I uh, love coaching these kids. Uh, last one I should ask before, you were very emotional after the uh, Fiesta Bowl victory. What, what, where, were, where were you at at that point? I mean, just, um, Sad the career was over. Thankful for what you got. What, uh, like I said, you were very, very emotional in the interview after the game. I think it just kind of my whole career hit me at one time. Just like all the events coming down to that last victory, um, which was kind of bittersweet because I felt like we had the potential to be able to play in the national championship, but. I don't know if it was something that was said in the question. It just, you know, and later hearing it, you know, it's funny, Country Roads is playing in the background, and uh, I don't know. I don't know. It could have been audio, visual, just the vibes on the field, the energy that was surrounding. I think everything just kind of overwhelmed You still feel it me. when you watch it? You still oh, yeah, it? it's hard not to. I'm, I know what that moment means to me in my life. You were in the locker room for Coach Stu's speech. Yes, um, what was that like? Um, then I'll let you get back to you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm no, you're good. You're good. Um, well, we were late for the game because of traffic, so everything was kind of rushed, and I feel like it just kind of settled us down and got us right in the pocket where we needed to be. Um, fired up. Fired up, mm -hmm. and usually during those coaches' speeches, I'm visualizing kind of visualizing in my head going through plays how the game's going to turn out and and what's going to happen and, and how I see it playing out um but the notable characteristics of the speech you know I'll block them I'll tackle them I'll hit them and hustle them you know those are the essentials uh, that I feel like were really stressed and you know coach do God rest his soul uh he, he, he picked us a good one. He certainly did. And uh, the Mountaineers got a good one when you came to Morgantown. Oh, and I appreciate the time, man. Thank you, Thank you very much. Yeah, appreciate it.